Hello everybody and thanks for watching Retro Tech Toys. I'm back with part two of the Raspberry Pi 4 video. But before we get started, I just wanted to let you guys know that I do have a Retro Tech Toys podcast that's available weekly on Spotify and pretty much everywhere else that you stream podcasts. Anyway, here's the Raspberry Pi 4. I took the two gigabyte back because of this fan that comes with the four gigabyte model. Uh, the four gigabyte model was finally in stock, so I grabbed that. It comes with a fan, it comes with the extra RAM, and I just kind of decided to go for it. It was only 10 bucks more. But anyway, everything else is basically basically the same, you get all the same stuff, and I actually got an SD card that works, so now I have two SD cards that are running with this thing here, and the first one that I have inside has um, Raspbian on it, and the other one that I have has an emulator on it. So I wanted to show you guys some of the gaming capability of the Raspberry Pi 4. Unfortunately, it doesn't work right now for Botticera Linux and RetroPie, so we're having to use something called uh, Laka or Laka. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. L-A-K-K-A. -K -K anyway, let's get everything plugged in and we will switch to the emulation operating system that I have installed. Now, Laka is basically RetroArch and it is, it's kind of its own Linux operating system. It's not terribly different from Botticera or RetroPie, but it does have a few limitations based on, you know, what you can run. Here's the 32 gigabyte SD card that I'll be using. I have my ROMs loaded on that and I've got a variety to show you. So I'm going to get that plugged in and we're going to test this thing out to see what it can do. And we're going to try a variety of things. First, let's load a Super Nintendo game. There's one that I really like that came out back in the day called Gods. We're going to try that and we're going to load it up here and, uh, I got a little speck of dirt there on my monitor. Let me get that off really quick. All right, that's a little better. And uh, I'm sorry about the sound. The problem with this operating system is that the sound will only run through HDMI and my monitor does not have any kind of speakers attached to it or any way to play audio through HDMI. And the only way to get the audio jack on the Pi to work through this OS is if I have an HDMI to DVI cable, which I do not have right now. So I wanted to show you guys what the sound sounds like but unfortunately there is no sound right now but you know as you can see uh the super nintendo emulation is pretty good it's um you know it's we have an hd screen here so it's going to look a little pixelated but overall it looks pretty good and you'll have to excuse my poor gameplay i'm kind of reaching around the camera here and using the keyboard you know i do have a ps3 dual shot controller that would work with this I didn't feel like hooking it up, but it will work if you go through a USB connection. It should work just fine, at least according to the documentation I've read. But yeah, this thing would handle Super Nintendo games just fine. I know previous Raspberry Pi models would not handle all Super Nintendo games, but this one seems perfectly fine. I haven't run into any issues with it aside from the sound, but that's not an incredibly huge deal. It's not necessarily a deal breaker for everyone. Uh, I know that when the drivers and such are available for the Raspberry Pi 4, they're for RetroPie and for Botticera, this will be a lot better. Anyway, let's check out some NES. Let's check out Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, which was one of my favorite games growing up. And uh, again, I apologize in advance. I'm going to get my butt kicked by Glass Joe because I'm using a keyboard and I'm reaching around the camera. That's okay. As you can see, it runs you know, NES stuff flawlessly. I mean, I didn't think it would, and, you know, I assumed it would run this just fine, and it does. So that was to be expected, and overall, I'm pleased. I grew up playing the Nintendo, and uh, as you can see, we had some weird thing that happened there. I have no idea what that was, but there's a couple of glitches here and there, but what are you going to do? Um, but yeah, I grew up playing the NES and, you know, a little bit with the SNES when it came out, but not as much as the NES, so... I would mainly be emulating like Nintendo and uh, maybe some Genesis slash Mega Drive, possibly, um, possibly some Sega Saturn and PlayStation 1. But anyway, that worked just fine as you can see. Let's load up something from Sega here. Of course, we're not going to expect this not to work. This is gained ground. You know, I'm pretty sure this was released for the Master System and for the Genesis slash Mega Drive. Uh, so, you know, you're not going to have a problem loading this. But, uh, this isn't like a Sega does what Nintendo don't situation because they both run just fine. Um, but yeah, Gang Ground works perfectly. Again, I really wish there was audio. I have not been able to get audio working because like I said, I don't have speakers on this monitor and the audio apparently has to go through HDMI, like I said before, unless you have an adapter. Do not have an adapter. I wish there was a way around that. 
I'd read some documentation that said possibly you could, but I don't know. Let's go ahead and run something here from Sega 32X so we can at least get like a 32-bit sort of thing going here and see how it works. We got BC Racers for the 32X and it looks beautiful to me so far. I'm really curious to see how the audio would sound on this and I'm going to have to check that out at some point when I get this fixed because that is one of the signs of whether or not it would run correctly because you can have the game running beautifully and then all of a sudden have terrible choppy audio. I just don't know. I assume it's probably okay, but I'd like to find out. But yeah, it loads BC Racer just fine. You know, sitting here racing down the track and everything's cool. Not a single problem. Uh, I will say that anybody that wants a Raspberry Pi 4 for retro gaming, I'd wait a couple of months until, you know, a proper version of Botticera or a proper version of RetroPie is released. Those are probably absolute musts. I cannot for the life of me get any other versions of RetroPie working on this. That would at least make it pretty worthwhile. But for the price tag, it's cool to have something that's going to be future proof for a while, but it doesn't matter if it's not going to run anything. So I think as a basic desktop PC, the Raspberry Pi works beautifully. I think for gaming, you know, it's it's just not there yet. Um, you know, it's also great for other projects like Internet of Things projects. And uh, let's switch back to Raspbian. Uh, I did find kind of a nice looking, kind of more graphically advanced game that runs on Raspbian that I thought I'd show you. It's called AD, and it's just kind of like one of those overhead strategy games, but it's got some 3D looking elements to it, so. I thought that would be nice to see, hey, does this, you know, how does it hold up? And uh, it takes a minute to get this loaded up. I can show you. Here we are on the screen. I mean, that map looks really nice. I mean, it's it's displaying it beautifully. You know, for the kind of game this is, I think it, it looks really good. And you can zoom in, and there's maybe a little bit of choppiness. Maybe it's a little slow, but it's running it a lot better than I thought I would. This kind of gives me hope that PlayStation 1 would function on this. Uh, maybe Dreamcast, maybe GameCube, probably not the Wii, maybe the PlayStation 2 as far as emulation, maybe. I don't think many people have really tried yet. Yeah, as you can see, it looks great. And uh, I had sound recorded for this, but it just the, the microphone picked it up horribly. And uh, the sound was really good. I'll, I'll let you know that it sounded brilliant. In the future, I will do some audio recordings to show you guys what, at least what the sound sounds like on video gaming and so forth and the Raspbian OS. And I'm probably going to switch over to a different operating system. There are a few projects that have Android running and some other stuff, and that might be where we need to go in terms of gaming. Well, that's all I have right now. The Raspberry Pi 4, it's cool, it's advanced. I don't know that it's ready for retro gaming yet. Not all the way, but it's pretty cool. And that's all I have for today. And as always, see you next time. Thank you for watching Retro Tech Toys.